recording. Uh, Ilona, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I love to see your faces so you don't have to turn your cameras off. Uh, so I prefer that. But yeah, uh, my name is Hanna Ilona Harmavara, or Ilona, um, and I am a Finnish lecturer at the University of Washington in Seattle at the moment. I've been here for uh, four years now, and I'm actually leaving this summer. I'm going back home. Um, I got a postdoc position there, but I wouldn't otherwise leave. I would be still one year here. It has been really wonderful, and it has been wonderful to teach Finnish at UW. So I teach Finnish language and also uh, culture classes in English. And I have a connection to the University of Minnesota as well. Uh, I was there 2012-13 as a Fulbright foreign language teaching assistant with uh, Dan Hatia, who I hope you are hearing me now. Uh, and I learned a lot from Dan, so Yay, thank you. Ilona. <laughs> Ivan Nahda. <laughs> Ivan Nahda. <laughs> and now I have been um, further learning um, to how to teach, especially online. So when this all happened last year, I had never taught anything online, uh, but I got um, kind of, I was happy to have that, have to face that challenge finally. I had always uh, tried to avoid that, but here we go. I think I have learned a lot and my students have learned a lot. and. This is indeed a new opportunity, but also it's not only just fun and games, but, but also uh, it can be somewhat taxing to students. But let's, let's talk about the positive size mostly today. Um, so yeah, the title of my talk is Vaina Moon and Goes Instagram. So this talk kind of uh, includes something old, something new, maybe something weird. Uh, and something blue and white, uh, appropriate to uh, the Finnish topic. So yeah, let's start with um, Mikael Akrikola. This is probably somewhat familiar character to everybody. So the father of the Finnish language, um, who translated the first, uh, the first person to translate the New Testament, and also um, made the ABC book of Finnish and created the way of writing uh, Finnish. So these are some things that I quite often uh, talk about in classes, something related to uh, Finnish culture, especially if there is a day of that or that. And so last Friday I talked about this uh, and that this was as much my student knew about Agricola at this point. Um, and then we went to, and yeah, and this I also introduced this picture that is really famous in Finland. Everybody knows this picture, Agricola, deep in his work. And it's part of the cultural imagery of Finland. Uh, and it's the importance of that is shown in these memes that I uh, then showed uh, to my students. And I would actually like you to also now participate in this. So this is something that I quite often do in the beginning of my classes. I want to check in. It's especially important in the online env environment um, to ask how the students are doing. And since there is not that much new in our lives going on, it's good to get some outside input uh, every now and then. So today, your task is to choose and to write to the chat, uh, which Agricola are you today? So you can uh, write the number, just write the number there. Are you DJ Agricola, ABC, ABC? Um, I wonder if the mic is on, or are you DJ Agricola uh, with the Coke uh, can? Or are you DJ Agricola? This is my students' favorite. Um, we meet quite early in the morning, so they are always a bit sleepy, so they chose that. Uh, then there is uh, agro cola, so an aggressive version, uh, goes to gym a lot. A um, bit controversial, um, substance abuse, uh, agri coca. This is one of the memes that Finns have made. Uh, and then fitting to Finland and to Minnesota, agri lumicola, so how to get rid of this uh, white stuff during the winter. And then a pun uh, based on uh, the English uh, Akriko Akrihili. So this, by giving these options, I teach something about the culture, how, what kind of memes are made in Finland, and also um, language play and, and other. This is also typically fun to the students. So uh, when I go over these answers, now I won't ask you, uh, we don't have time for that, uh, but I normally also, this is not just for, um, for fun and games, but also they have to tell why they feel like this Agricola. 
So yeah, okay, one of you, uh, Agrocola, yes. Uh, Agricoma, okay, I hope you get more agro during this presentation. And uh, Goma again, yeah, it's kind of late, I guess, in Minneapolis. Um, Agricoca, oh, okay, someone is trying to coke, <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe they are uh, hyped up about this. Agricol uh, goes well with the mining industry that Vince used to do. Um, and the uh, Agricoma, and oh, good, there is someone who is DJ Agricola, that's really good for Friday. And another one, and then we have the Minnesotan who says Acre Lumicola. Thank you for participating in this uh, small thing. So this is a nice way of um, checking in with the students and being like pushing them out of their, I didn't do anything last, last night kind of um, answers. So this is typically fun. <laughs> yeah, cool. So yeah, this was a warm up for you. And what are, are we going to really uh, go deep into today is first I'm going to talk about the old normal uh, that we had here in uh, at the University of Washington. And I mentioned here two Instagram handles. So if you are on Instagram, you could go and check those out later or now. Uh, we have done quite a lot of community building uh, in Finstagram from UDAP, that's for Finnish studies. And this is Finstagram, uh, for Instagram for the Scandinavian studies at UDAP. So this is another handle. So I will show pictures that have been publicly posted on Finstagram or UDAP scanned. Then we will talk about the new normal. And then we will talk a little bit about digital pedagogy, why and how. And then there is time for questions and comments. So yeah, what, what was the old normal? So here, uh, University of Washington Finnish Studies program representing at the uh, Finnish Christmas Bazaar in Seattle uh, that we have every uh, year. That is always a fun event. And this is my former Fulbright assistant, Mary Luoma. And this is uh, our graduate, uh, Greg Flaumer, who now works at the department. So we go there and present at the study program and do some fun things. And the students get to also experience that. And he, here we have some uh, pictures from the classroom. This is one time uh, we were making um, Valentine's Day or Ustaman by the Friends Day cards in class. And I took a picture of them and posted that on Instagram. And we don't only stay indoors, but we can also go outdoors. So this is, we are learning numbers with the help of a milk game. That was uh, really fun. We did it at the quad at, at UDOP. And uh, everything is not only fun and games. We also have traditional means, uh, Blackboard and my terrible handwriting that they need to learn how to read. So uh, there are different aspects of um, learning. Also only the highlights get to the Instagram normally. And yeah, here are some couple other things that we did physically together. Here we are, um, the last task of the quarter two years ago was to make fish soup together uh, as a group. And here is the last class of the second year finish with the uh, teaching assistant. Uh, you have the coffee Aika, was it? And we have also the Finnish coffee hour every Friday and we could meet up uh, also outside sometimes. Uh, and here, this is just a random picture of uh, us on Halloween, and this went uh, with, an, uh, with a class project. So these fun times that we can do together in classroom and also building the community. And really important part for the students is also to get outside of the uh, classroom and outside of campus. So here we are presenting a sketch at the Finnish Bazaar. We were doing the Finnish nightmares, if you're familiar with that. This is a bus scene. Nobody wants to sit next to each other and so forth. Uh, this is from campus. Uh, they, the students wrote a piece in the Finnish student magazine and asked students at UW to know, tell what they know about Finland. And that made a nice piece that was later published in Finland. And this is um, a cultural fest at the University of Washington, where again, the students are representing the country with another uh, Fulbright uh, assistant. And what is really, I, one thing we always collect um, uh, feedback for our classes. And one of the feedback that we consistently get is like, what helps you in learning Finnish? And kind of surprisingly, 
the answer, sorry, the things that we do, just like hang out, be outside of classroom as a community. So we have uh, gone to see some ice hockey a couple of times. Now we are looking forward to the clock and coming to Seattle. This is the Finnish Independence Day party that we get all together. This is a big old Christmas party hosted by Andy Nesting and the Finnish studies um, professor. This is our spring party at someone's backyard. And this is a graduation. So these, um, these events that really make the community visible and you get to uh, interact with your community, these are super important for the students, especially because this is such a small program. So it really keeps the students motivated. So that's how we have, like, we have to lure them in. First of all, that's difficult. And then how to keep them in, this is the way we do it. But uh, what now, when everything is online, how to make it happen? And yeah, one skill that I have learned during this year is to make these uh, pictures, uh, photos of skills, bad <laughs> skills. But yeah, this is the question I am uh, going to tackle today. But yeah, let's stop here first for the poll. So I would like to, because you have all experienced, this is a global phenomenon. You have all <laughs> experienced uh, Zooming and not being able to meet in person and you are here now. So if you could, Christina, launch the poll that you can choose um, how many uh, answers you want uh, that describe well uh, your relationship with Zooming and being, in, uh, being online and not in person. So yeah, it gives an access. I suffer from Zoom fatigue. I meet friends and family more often. I miss the physical environments. Everything is more fun or easy online. Happy hours on Zoom, threat or opportunity. And I love not having to wear pants. <laughs> and just a quick reminder, if you could go ahead and mute yourselves if you are not the speaker. So unless you have something to pop in, please do click that little uh, microphone at the corner of your screen. Thank you. Did we mute? Can you see? What? Are we on mute? What? Are, Are we, we on? No. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Are we on yeah, mute now? <laughs> Whenever the poll, poll is ready, you could, uh, Christina, share the results. No sure. Okay, in the 30s, everyone got their answers in. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a cough drop. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll. <clears throat> okay, you're quite positive. Gives me an access to a variety of events and classes. Yeah, that that has been really a globally. Um, a great phenomenon. I, I was able to take a class at the University of Helsinki this um, fall. The classes were from 2 to 4 a.m., which was a bit <laughs> terrible. But other than that, it was great. I got some credits and I learned some, some new skills there. Uh, not a lot of you suffer from Zoom fatigue. I think um, people who do it every day for work um, suffer more. And yeah, and this has been al also an opportunity to meet uh, friends online. I meet uh, my Finnish friends quite often. Uh, and yes, that's the thing. I miss the physical environments of my work hobbies. That is really a big deal. And that's also what we talk about with students a lot. So we have the, uh, we meet every day from the comfort of our home, but we still can talk to each other live. And there is always the technology that is uh, mediating our interactions. And also just like the physical physicality of learning. So quite often we do things that we move around in the classroom, but we can't do it now. And one thing is that I, I use these mice as teaching tools, they're fun, but like if I throw it to you, you can't catch it. So that's really, really um, a part of like what we are missing. But at the same time, you can have your own things at home. For example, when we were learning about how to say something is in front of something, you can have your own favorite tool and say that, it's in the front of a mug or next to it or so forth. So there, it can be replaced, but still there is something, especially with language learning that you, 
when you get to do it in um, in a real environment and also just with the physical movements, it is easier. And yeah, you don't say that everything is more fun or easy online. I don't agree with it either. Uh, happy hours on Zoom. <laughs> yes, I think at first it was fun. Now I don't want to participate anymore. And yes, I answer that I, I love not having to wear pants or I wear uh, my sweatpants. That's uh, the, um, just the how re relaxed it can be. Okay, thank you so much for playing along. And I uh, is is the um, now on the the poll? Can you see it still or oh, on? Okay, good. good. Okay. So how we welcome this year, uh, first thing that we did, so this was a shock. Uh, so we went online and was like, okay, what's going on in Finland? So 2020 has been an exceptional year for internet memes. There is already also research about it uh, out. And this has, memes have be become a way that we really fast react to and also cope with um, the reality that is now kind of harsh and new. And we can make fun of it, even if it's grim, the uh, actual topic. But, um, but it's, it's something, the humor always helps. And memes, even though like they're kind of, they can go viral and they are global in a sense uh, through social media, uh, they're also quite local. So the first thing that we did to understand what's going on in Finland, we uh, checked on the COVID memes. And for example, these are found by my students. So they found this when uh, Uusimaa County was uh, in the first lockdown and the, you couldn't travel out and in, like from Helsinki region. So someone made this um, uh, under the dome, the Stephen King meme, and we could talk about. So the students were like, what is this? I, I understand under the dome, but I don't understand it's Uusima thing. So we talked about it. And then also finish uh, art. So everybody knew that how we were um, hoarding uh, toilet paper, but then this is in the Finnish uh, environment in the epic painting by Von Wright and the birds are now fighting not over this uh, ladybird, but over the toilet paper. So these uh, brought opportunities to discuss various things. And yeah, and this really gave a more of a virtual access to Finland. So whenever I teach abroad or we teach abroad, there is always this like how to create the target language environment as easily or, or as well as possible uh, for the students to experience. So when I teach in Finland, it's easy to just like, hey, go there, do that, and like then report back and they can see the language everywhere and experience a culture. But uh, that is not that easy uh, when the ocean is between us and Finland. But now uh, the Finnish, for example, art institutions uh, started to make an effort to get an access uh, to people to experience art. So Ateneum, uh, the National Gallery, for example, created these um, uh, virtual tours and it's like it's almost like walking with the tour there so it's pretty good it's not just a video of the paintings but you go with the tour guide and what we did with the students we participated in Vappu uh, first of May celebrations and it's a huge party in Finland and super important culturally culturally and that was that was really neat that we could participate in something that whole Finland was participating in so the city of Helsinki created this Avapu event and you could actually make an avatar and join that thing. So they had all the traditional Avapu like choir singing and some like jokes and old um, uh, TV material and all that. And then you could, and then a concert afterwards and you could just be there, hang out as an avatar. And that was really cool for us. And uh, yeah, and also in general, it's really important that the students get to experience Finland uh, somehow. And this is a, a trip to Finland is one of the exercises that I let the students do quite often. And it's not only um, when, during the COVID times, but I have done it also before. But this is especially important now. So uh, there is one of the topics in the book that I use that is about uh, traveling. And so this was an add on to that topic. And we had clear learning objectives uh, defined by the textbook partially. So vocabulary related to traveling, uh, expressions of time, clothing, and so forth. And also grammar, past tense, and we reviewed object, which is uh, difficult uh, for a lot of uh, Finnish learners. 
And also uh, a really important objective was to uh, gain some cultural and geographic knowledge by doing this. So, so the uh, students had to go on Google and find, find a trip that they would like to do in Finland. And I helped them in every step and we had a different kind of scaffolding for how to get there. But one skill that I wanted them to learn is to search uh, information online in Finnish. And even if the students are digital natives and all that, it's not um, so easy for them to like just go on the Finnish internet, which kind of keywords to use in Finnish and what sites are good and so forth. So this, is a, this was a first step for them to really going into, into exploring uh, Finnish online uh, and Finland online. So, and yeah, and what was fun about it is that uh, the outcome of this, this exercise was a physical postcard. So uh, they had to present their trip to Finland. They did a PowerPoint presentation and talk about it. And then after that, so they had to um, practice the past tense. So they did it by writing me a postcard from their trip. So they chose pictures on the internet wrote the thing and even put, uh, pasted their picture on the postcard. And then I put it to the Finnish post um, office um, service and sent it to myself uh, to Seattle. So this is a really neat way of combining both um, online and physical learning or, or environments. They have unfortunately not seen these cards yet, but they will when we will go back in person. And um, of course, like I'd never know, especially role playing can be something that the students don't, not every student enjoys it, but um, I try to base my teaching as much as possible on feedback and also on uh, research. So I sometimes collect uh, extensive feedback for some things, and this is for this exercise. I think it was a fun project. We could use the vocabulary that we learned in a meaningful way. I learned about Finnish towns and places, especially about Rauma that we chose to visit, chose to visit. So it's their student's choice. It was nice to have this imagine framework for practicing vocabulary and grammar. This made it a lot more interesting than just reading a textbook. I like role play in language class as it makes language learning fun, fun and less serious. The objectives were kind of hidden, so they didn't know that they, they were um, forced to learn the object and the old uh, vocabulary. So while we did, it, did the whole trip planning, it felt just like learning about some places in Finland while we actually learned or practiced a lot of other travel related vocabulary too. When I look at the slides now, I can see a clear pedagogical idea, but when we were in class, it felt more like a game. And the, especially the last line, line I'm really happy about because I think in general in learning, uh, making something in, into a game is a really good strategy because it keeps the students motivated and it creates them like this hunger to learn more. And especially in language learning, there has to be so much repetition. So if you can make it a game, then it's a lot more fun. Sometimes I just give them a a dice and make them roll and conjugate verbs and they still think it's fun and I'm like oh fool you but <laughs> yeah that's how it works yeah. and yeah now we go uh, specific more specifically into digital pedagogy uh, I have um, given a speech about this before with uh, my previous assistant uh, Mary Luoma and she has also written a um, master's thesis about the topic so we really, when we were teaching together, we really explore, explored these things. And this was pre-COVID. So I had some background when I had to go online. So Mary's thesis was about changing the roles of a learner, teacher, and technology, multimodal resources in teaching Finnish language and culture in foreign universities. So her idea was she um, asks students and teachers how they feel about uh, the technology and how it helps in learning and does it hinder learning and what are the good ways of doing that. And one of the, uh, or a couple of uh, her most, result, most um, central results uh, was that uh, they, if they get to do something that is real, so participating in something real, learning uh, the Finnish conventions of the everyday media and producing Finnish in it is super important for them. And also uh, to keep in really in mind that the language learners are language users. So they are not just like someone who is foreign to the 
whole culture and whole concept of language, but they are already becoming the members immediately. So um, they get to use language in environments in which their active engagement potentially creates affordances for language acquisition. So in English, uh, give them opportunities to do, do it for real uh, and also to make them interested in it. Uh, and also an important part of this is to learn about ways of expressing identity in a Finnish context. So they can express their identities quite often in, a, in an American social media uh, context. And it's pretty similar in Finland too, but there are some uh, differences and especially for example, the language, how we talk about things. And this is something that we do every uh, fall, typically, we, when we talk about clothing, we do this uh, Instagram fashion thing. So they get to talk about the clothing that they um, love to wear, and we take pictures and post them. And here, oops, here is the uh, what they have written in Finnish. And this is, for example, this per, for this person, it was super important. She has Finnish background, and she really wanted to show her beautiful Marimekko coat. So that was really maybe an even more important um, experience for her than the to the other ones. So you never know which things certain people like, but giving uh, multiple opportunities helps in that. And yeah, isn't it gorgeous on campus? I really miss it. Yeah, and what uh, also the uh, online environment also takes us away from the classroom env environment, which is also not a natural environment as such. So this, there is something good about uh, getting to do things at home, for example. So this was a task for uh, the uh, students to cook at home. I encourage them to make some Finnish food. For example, here is pea soup and here is some pulla. Um, so they could do that or whatever they were interested in doing. And then they had to make a cooking show video about it in Finnish. And I helped them again, like I gave them a lot of uh, linguistic material and also just the, um, help them in, um, in putting the video together, but they did excellent job. And they were first year students at the moment. And they really was, were like, oh, okay, I didn't know that I could do this. So at home, they can share their things that they want to do and um, practice in a meaningful way in a less stressful environment when they can just like video themselves and retake it if it's not good and so forth. So that was a fun project that really gave them um, opportunities to practice. And here uh, is, is a website that um, my Finnish, my students in the Finnish culture class uh, created. So I have classes in English about the Finnish culture uh, and uh, one of the tasks that they could do this year was, oh, sorry, um, was to explore a Finnish cultural item item and make something uh, online things about it so that their classmates could see it and also like whoever. So one group made these korvapusti pastries as of their final project. Uh, they wrote about the history of the pastry uh, and learned a lot through that. So I, I posed a question of like, can, can you taste korvapusti online? And I say yes. And here, especially one of the students um, recorded the whole process of making it and was super excited about uh, getting to experience such thing. And this was all, uh, the script did this all separately. Uh, because of COVID, but it turned out really good. So yes, I could almost taste it when I, I saw their thing and also other students got to explore it online uh, as they shared it. Oh yeah, and this is a sous chef of one of the students and it's a fun detail and I shared it on Instagram. Yeah, and so coming from the uh, real world uh, to more fictional wor worlds, uh, we of course also study literature here. Uh, we are now reading a book called uh, Ensimmäinen Murhani, My First Murder by Lena Lehtonen, so Nordic Noir. And um, we do typically, we read it slowly and we do some grammar ex exercises or do something else fun with it. So this time I tied it with the theme that they, um, we learned that was about hobbies and how to tell about yourself. 
So these uh, students had to choose one character from the book and make a Tinder profile for the character. So a platform that they are um, used to, like online dating apps, and not creating something about themselves that can be also sometimes problematic and less fun. Again, like learning something from someone else's perspective. They took these pictures, their random pictures online, and these are the names of the characters in the book. They have to study like how old they are, what do they like, and then write about themselves. Uh, and write about this, uh, uh, the characters as they were themselves. And then after that, we did an on online game when they have to swipe left and right. And by that, I grouped them. So these five students, this ended up being a friender because of the genders and sexual orientations that they, they chose. So they were a friend friending project. Um, and again, like I let them choose whatever gender, whatever sexual orientation. So I have to then, them, then adapt to their needs and wants. So we changed it to friender. And then they had to text each other. Like they were actually texting outside of classroom. And that's, that was, I wasn't there. This was outside of the class time. And then they sent me screenshots of what they did. And one of the uh, purposes of this discussion was to get to know each other a bit. And otherwise one was to set up a meeting time for this new friend group. So these three people, uh, Miriam, Pia, and Yuri, uh, they decided to meet in a cat cafe in Helsinki. So they again had to go online, search for a fun place in Helsinki that they could meet because the book takes place in Helsinki. Uh, so they get into the world of the book and into the world of the city, and they actually do something online that uh, that is real. Uh, this is really real, like texting from their own uh, mobile devices. And yeah, and in the end of this, they had an overall exam that was their the first date. So the first date they got to got together and talked, made friends with each other. Uh, that was actually their overall exam. So not as fun as you could think, but <laughs> I think they still had more fun and they had the characters and they had went gone deep into that and it worked out. Yeah, and this is uh, actually my last point here. So uh, what we do in classroom and how we can access Finland, that's one thing, uh, but also really important thing, uh, especially during this year is building communities online and how to, because we can meet in person, how to remind our students that we have the Finnish community and uh, also the Scandinavian studies com community. So when the pandemic hit, um, I took over the UW scanned uh, Instagram handle. We hadn't posted that much before it, uh, but since I had already done the Instagram, I was like, okay, I can do it. So what I did in the beginning, I just every, week I posted a picture of these animals that I had, had drawn and the task was for the uh, followers of that Instagram uh, page to guess what the animals are and then post the names of the animals in the languages that they have learned with us. So it could be Norwegian, Finnish, Latvian, Lithuanian, Estonian, whatever. And in the end there was a there was prize for three best uh, guessers. So that was part of the like really bringing them to the Instagram and making them follow it. And it worked really well. And I also started to post like two times a week. So when the a year ago we had 140 followers, I think, and now we have 607. So that really worked. And it has had also snowballed. So people start to follow because their friends follow and so forth. And that, um, so yeah, it, it creates a, a possibility for an online community and people comment and see what's going on in different classes as well. And also this is some kind of a storefront for the uh, Scandinavian studies or the Finnish studies. So people who want to maybe learn um, one of the languages at UW and it was like, oh, I don't know if it's cool or not. Oh, wait, they have an Instagram thing. Uh, and then they see that there are fun things happening. So then they hopefully get involved. So that's part of the uh, getting the students in. And uh, you never know how people react to your posts. What is successful and what is not? Does someone go, something go viral or not? So that's really great when someone gives some feedback. So this is uh, a thing that I posted both on Instagram and on UW Scanned uh, from my Kalevala class. The students had to create some Kalevala um, commercial products or art. So here, for example, one of the students made a, uh, 
addition to the Calavera jewelry line. Uh, and this is a tool set uh, called Ilmari uh, for Seppo Ilmarinen. Uh, so these were these ideas um, that, that they created for what could be done. And then one of the students made Lemminkainen into a pop musician and actor. So they presented this in class and then uh, with their permission, I posted this online and I, I wrote a description of what they said. Um, and uh, so I, I also use Instagram quite a lot for sharing knowledge about the Nordic countries and just um, getting people interested in that. So I posted that there. And then I was so happy to see that there is someone just a random, I don't know this person who says awesome concepts and I went to his page and he's really into Kalevalaik topics. So I was like, oh, someone found us. Uh, and then here I asked, would you buy these? Was my kind of engagement comment. And someone says, yes. So when the students see that, that someone actually is interested in their classwork, it really gives them positive uh, feedback. And they, they are like, OK, yeah, we can do this. And it's not too bad to do these things online. Or that's what I hope they get out of that. And also the community building, like kind of physical community building. Uh, we have done a lot of visits to other classes. I apologize for the Norwegian flag. Uh, the Norwegian st students did this uh, first and their flag turned out better than the Finnish flag. Uh, they, are, they have more students and yeah, it's more polished. Uh, but we have done these visits that first year and second year Finnish students are together and the Norwegians and, and Swedes and so forth. So this is this was not that easy to organize during the like normal uh, school year in person, but when we are online, we we can go and just like be in each other's classes. And we have also invited outsiders. It's so much easier to invite someone from Finland to your class to talk to the students. So that has really created uh, new opportunities. People wouldn't normally, especially with the time difference, who would come to a Finnish class, but now they're oh, okay, I'm Zooming anyways, and I, I don't have anything else to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I uh, promised to talk about Vainamoinen, and I, you must have been wondering, like, where is the Vainamoinen? And here he is uh, on Instagram. So, uh, I posted this on, um, this was my Halloween outfit today, uh, this year, last year. And I posted online with the Vakavanha Vainamoinen toivottaa hyvää Halloweenia. And I posted this also with the Kalevala Day later with the uh, UW Scant and shared information about Vainamoinen, uh, our great <laughs> forefather, <laughs> and let people know what is, what is Vainamoinen and what is Kalevala in a fun way. Okay, this is the end of my talk, uh, and I welcome you to ask any questions you want or comments. Thank you, Ilona. I have a quick question. Um, so it looks like you're mostly engaging a visual medium through Instagram. Have you considered also using Twitter or even going to video like with TikTok? Uh, what made you settle on Instagram for your main me uh, medium? <laughs> It is in a way the easiest. The Instagram, for example, like why why Instagram and why TikTok? They are both popular among uh, young people. So they did, actually people get a lot of information nowadays from Instagram. So also UW in general just post a lot of like what you should do during COVID and so forth on Instagram. So that uh, it's it reaches a lot of students and also other people. Um, TikTok is, it, I don't use it myself, but some of my students have used it. For example, one of the projects for the um, culture class was to make macaroni latico and, um, and blueberry pie. Uh, and then they made TikTok uh, uh, instruction videos uh, with that. So yes, I have used those too. And Twitter, I don't use myself. Uh, so that's maybe my limitation there. And also one thing is that uh, students tend to be more comfortable with uh, posting pictures of themselves than videos, especially if it involves speaking a foreign language. Okay. Ilona, I was wondering, um, physically, are you in Finland or were you in Washington or when did you move or whatever? Uh, I'm now in, uh, in Seattle. And I've been here since 2017, and I, I haven't been able to go home uh, for a while. So I have been 
put here. So That's and it. I and I could do this job from Finland too, but the time difference would be difficult. So in in Seattle, have you been meeting physically with the students at all then, or? Um, no, I individually like I had some small pre Christmas presents, and so some of them came to like get it from me in a distant manner. And we are now planning the first. We are start to be all vaccinated. So in a couple of weeks, we will celebrate the Vappo in person. So that's the first time in more than a year. So who's going to take over for you? So you said you're going back to Finland? Yeah, we are. We have chosen a new lecturer. So the lecturer is always sent by the Finnish government. Uh, so they pre-selected uh, candidates and we chose one of them. So Anna Maria Peltomäki is, is her name. And uh, yeah, she's excited to start or like, yeah, start fresh and also continue my work. Hello, my name is uh, Randy Peck, and I wasn't sure I found this on, online here on the Minnesota uh, Finnish group, I think. And so I'm like a student. Uh, my uh, uh, Finnish name was Beck on end. Mm, okay. Matty and Sophie Riaki came over on a boat from uh, Ulo, Finland. I'm trying to find out my Finnish history. I'm having a real tough time. That's as far as I've got back. I did talk to a girl on Facebook from Ulo, Finland. Uh, She's in the army, makes uh, donuts, gluten-free donuts. I just forgot her name right now. But I'm having a real hard time trying to get, I want to get back to Finland. And I love this Finnish food. I just want to mention one of the, my favorite foods was uh, silly sala. Uh, that was like a potato salad with herring and oh. beet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I made that. My dad, who was Finnish, said, don't ever make that crap again. I said, well, I loved it. It was basically a uh, potato salad with herring in it and beets, and it was delicious. So I'm trying to do, I was a chef, so I'm trying to cook with it. So I'm like a, one of your students here. I'm trying to learn about my Finnish roots and the stories. I'm having a real tough time, though, getting back farther from Ulo. I want to go visit Ulo someday. And uh, so I just, I'm happy to be here. And uh, I had a hard time getting online here. The passwords, the passcodes didn't work real well for me. But thank Aww. you. I just want to mention a couple things for you for there. Okay. Thank you so much. And that's, that's uh, really part of my students are really trying to find their heritage. Part of them are someone totally just like geeks who want to learn Finnish, but it is uh, really rewarding to work with them and, and like doing these trips. Like if you were my students, you could uh, choose to visit Olo and choose to do, do the uh, food for your uh, schoolwork. So that it's, it's really rewarding for me to help people discover their uh, heritage. Thank you. I feel like a student, so thank you. I'm 65, so I'm an old student, but I'm still trying. I'm not giving up. I want to learn. Thank you. Yeah. Well, and Randy, thank you for mentioning too that you found this group through Facebook. So actually, you also came here through social media using the digital medium to uh, get involved, and we're happy to have you. Yes. I did have a hard time logging in for some reason. I kept going and kept saying wrong passcode and everything, but I didn't give up and finally got on. So thank you. I'm always wanting to learn. Yeah, and we don't use Facebook in the program because that's for old people like me. <laughs> like me, like me. I love Facebook, but it's getting kind of crazy nowadays, but I love it. But it's a good way uh, to talk. That girl from Ulo, Finland, I just I just can't think of her name right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, said hi to me and says, I know Bekonen's in Ulo. Am I saying yeah. right to Ulo or is that Olu? Olu, yeah. Olu, okay. I'm... <laughs> I'm just happy to know where my uh, ancestors came from. And I can look on Facebook and Google Earth and see Ulo walk down the streets of Ulo. Yes, yes. And and have that's, I'm very impressed with these little things that I can do. And uh, that's just amazing to do that and to see how far up in the Baltic Sea it is up there. And I do want to visit there and maybe not this summer, maybe next summer. And I want to connect with uh, uh, relatives there and I'm having a hard time with that. But uh, thank you so much. Yeah. And yeah, it is like really you can there is there are endless opportunities for the students too, depending on what they want to do. And one thing that we did actually this week was I asked the students to share something that they do uh, online. Um, some people watch some animations in Finnish and 
one person said that I, I, I talk to my relatives on Facebook. So that is, that is a really important uh, channel that I can't even offer. They have their own connections and but I can all, only encourage them to do that. Absolutely. Are there any other questions? Yeah, so I how know. often do you no. use oh. Instagram? Is it daily? Do you post to Instagram daily, weekly? Um, I think like, <sighs> I think the rhythm of three times a week was really good for creating following. Uh, daily is maybe too much. Uh, it kind of feels like spamming. But uh, if it's the once a week is already a bit too rarely, and now I'm kind of I, I have lot I'm I have run out of topics because it has been a year without anything exciting happening. So, uh, but yeah, I try to do it like at least once a week. At, yeah, two weeks would be, two times a week would be good now. What is the age range of your students? Uh, they're quite young. So they are from 18 to 32, I think now. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. That's good. Yeah. You, yeah, wanna, yeah. you see here, uh, oh, I was one of your students and yes. I, I appreciated the conversational part of the learning. I was wondering, uh, when you're online, how do you get the conversation going and how do you hear each other's voices uh, so that works out that way? Like when we are in a Zoom classroom? Yeah, but you're online now. Yeah, so uh, what we do is that we um, typically, I put them in a breakout, breakout rooms. So they have a, one or two people there. And it's easy to con communicate in that way there. It's quite intimate and it's, it works. And I can also go into their rooms and check in with them and, and help them talk, so. Okay, and you did the same thing in our class when I, I had your class. When, one of the good things about it was learning the conversational. When I was in Rovaniemi, I, it was kind of accidental, but I ran into Yolupuki when he was not talking to anybody. And he and I had a conversation because he was such a good interviewer uh, for about 20 minutes in Finnish. And that's probably the longest, most successful conversation I've ever had. But it was that conversational class that taught me how to talk. Is that the Santa Yolopuki? Yes, yep. Santa Yolopuki. And he was really good at interviews because he interviews so many people in multiple ways. I, uh, I play a modern version, American version of uh, Yolopuki and uh, Tomte at the American Swedish Institute here. And I think I met that guy and I said, I want to come to Finland someday. And he says, I'm going to invite you there because he came to America. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of play my version of uh, Yolopuki. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh. Yeah, and thank you, you for mentioning the um, conversational part. So it really uh, now we don't actually we normally meet five times uh, times per week, but now we meet only three times per week online. So they have their independent things, and it's in a way it's easier for them. They can watch the videos on their own or do the online stuff on their own. And then we come to classes, and the class time is mostly for um, for talking. So they get to practice everything. And sometimes it's more preform, and sometimes there is more like strict primer thing that we are trying to uh, practice. But it's it creates the space for like really now it's a finished practice time, no English, just finish, and then they can do like like things on their own that can be done on, on their own. Ilona, I have a question. I actually have two questions. The first one is, um, you said that you guys have been online for the full year. Uh, is that because of all of you that is online? And then secondly, yes, okay. Uh, because here in Minnesota, our universities have gone mostly back in person. And then second question is, I noticed in the text that the students had written, um, somebody had written Minulla, somebody had written Mulla, and somebody had written Mia. So do you let them kind of choose if they want to learn the written language or the uh, spoken language or a dialect? They have to learn it all. Okay. <laughs> I, I always say, maybe this is from Dan that you, you, you learn two languages for the price of one. So like I, I from the day one, I, I start teaching the difference between speaking, spoken and written language. And I also uh, tell about the importance 
So whenever we write, and this is for Tinder, uh, I guess you saw it there. So there, Finns typically write in uh, spoken Finnish. So like I, I try to also teach them to, um, to follow the conventions of, of whatever genre. So if the genre is Tinder, then you can use, you, some people are just like use written forms there, but most people use spoken forms and they are really into um, learning the spoken Finnish. And we have like, they wanted to learn about swear words. So I had a whole lecture after they had asked for about that for like a month or so. I was like, okay, I will teach you all because they started to swear. And I was like, if you swear, you have to do it right. So they're really yeah. eager to learn. And I'm happy about that. So they really understand that there are two varieties and different uh, situations require different things. And some of them are really into dialects. So I'm also happy about it's not only Helsinki centered, uh, which is kind of the standard. Well, that's funny. I learned how to swear and finish, and I'm sorry, Dan. I learned how to swear and finish on Tinder, or not on Tinder, on Twitter, <laughs> Finnish friends, and also on Hockey Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those are great places to learn. <laughs> yeah, so where the real language is there, I, I direct the students there, and that's the that's what they find rewarding too. I just want to say one more thing. I remember the girl's name I met on Facebook in Ulo, Finland. And she, I believe they go in the army uh, for several, I think she's still in the army. She makes these donuts. Her name was Taru Ritala. Okay. And I have not talked to her in a while, but it's neat. She has a photographer and just need to meet somebody from there. And it's like a pen pal and it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just want to mention that name. I forgot her. Isn't so, myth or fairy, isn't that? Excuse me? Doesn't the name Taru, I think it means myth? I'm not sure. I, th I think it's T-A-R-U, I think. Yeah. So what it does it mean? A myth or a story. Okay, yeah. okay. Unless she's fake, I believe she's real over there. <laughs> but uh, she's about my age in her, in her high 50s. And I think they still stay in the, the service, army service. She wears army outfits and goes to places and cooks the donuts and coffee for the uh, army guys. So it's very interesting. Thank you. Well, Ilan, I was just—I was just going to say. Be kind of a, I'm not too sure if we're ready to make a jump to Instagram for FACA yet, mm -hmm. but we got to think about it. Yeah. Are you guys the Minnesota FACA, or are you uh, the whole nation FACA? Oh, this is just Minnesota. Okay, I'm, I have played uh, uh, Yolupuke, Yolupuke at your. Uh, uh, thing there, not this year, but a couple of years ago and a few years before that. Do you, uh -oh. I, I love that group and I don't see you guys too often here, but and I'm pretty busy playing Santa during that time. So, but yeah, I'm uh, nice to hear you guys. I'm, I'm out here wanting to learn. So thank you for putting this together. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, Dan, did you want to say? Or yeah, I've been, I've been trying to, I haven't been able to get <laughs> I just want to say thank you. So it's one number one, it's just so great to see you. And um, it's so it's so exciting to hear about all the cool things that you're doing at, at Washington. And um, thank you for sharing those with us. And um, I might steal an idea or two. And then I just wanted to say, um, could you talk about, because you didn't really say a whole lot about which classes, you briefly alluded to which classes, but there's you're talking both about language and culture classes, right? And I was wondering if you could talk about the culture classes a little bit. So like, I think one of the blog one that was for a culture class, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have taught three different culture classes here. So in English, uh, one of them is the uh, 100 level general Finnish cultural and literary history. So it's, it focuses a lot on, on history and narratives and such. Um, and then we have Kalevala class that was created maybe 15, 10, 20 years ago. And that's that's super fascinating. And that also includes um, like contemporary things uh, that doesn't enroll as as well as it used to. And that's a, that's a pity. Uh, and then I created myself a class on Finnish popular music. So that's, that's what I'm actually now teaching and what we are now exploring. And that's also fun uh, for the American students to see like the Americanness and the Finnishness and what what is all is uh, popular culture. Yeah, sounds like fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do that. I don't have time, but I would if I could. Uh, do you have 
is there a lot of um, interest in that? I mean, do you have how many people come to the classes or sign up for those cultural classes? Well, it has been anything from, um, I think the lowest is five for the um, Kalevala class to 50 for the general culture class. Oh, wow. So our department has, actually has a really good reputation for those like um, general education classes. Uh, they are considered fun and easy, <laughs> unfortunately. One of my students uh, now said, oh, I came because I heard it was easy, but I actually got to learn something and it was great. I was like, yes, good. <laughs> but yeah, they are also about sharing the culture, especially the 100 level classes. Fantastic. Well, it's eight o'clock. Do we have any more questions? Oh, Kitos Palio. Kitos. Just a quick question on that um, one picture. You were at a hockey stadium, were you? Yeah. Where was where was that stadium? Uh, is it Everett? Like it's just north of Seattle. Is that where they're going to have their team that's coming in? No, uh, I don't even know. It will be in Seattle. But now we have like closest is Everett and Kent, and they are not NHL, but lower league. Uh, but like, it's a finished sport, so people enjoy it. It's a good excuse to do an outing together. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you so much, Ilona. That was wonderful. So, thank you mm -hmm. for thank having me.